Today I'm going to show you something very exciting that I actually use in most of my reports. Let's take a look at the report. Basically, in this report, the end user can select which KPI should be shown. So I'm showing revenues right now, but I could just simply select gross profit and then everything changes to showing gross profit. And also, I can show periodic or monthly numbers or show everything year to date. And now I'm going to show you step by step how this was set up. Let's start with the slicer up here. So basically this is a regular slicer which contains the KPI field from the KPIs table. Let's take a look at the KPIs table in the data view. So I go to the data view and select the KPIs table and you see that it's a very small table only containing the KPI name, revenue, cost, gross profit, the one shown in the slicer and then also a KPI ID 1, 2 or 3. When I go back to the report view, let's look, at, let's look at this measure called selected KPI. And this measure shows the min, so the lowest number of the currently selected KPI ID. What does that mean? Basically, it's better to show you when I just add a simple visual. So let's go here and I select the card visual and then I just move it to the side a little bit and I'm going to add this selected KPI measure to show you what this actually does. Right now it's showing 3 but when I go and change the slicer to costs it will show 2 and when I again change it to revenue it shows 1 and this number is of course taken from this table. So revenue is KPI ID 1. Okay, but what do we do with this? With this we can use the switch function and we do this in the selected value measure. The selected value measure says switch and then switch selected KPI which is this measure showing 1, 2 or 3. So if the measure shows 1 this selected value measure sums up everything from the revenues column from the sales table. If it is 2, it sums up the costs. And if it is 3, it sums up gross profit. Let's look at the sales table. I go back to the data view and then select the sales table where you can see there is three columns one for revenue, one for cost, one for gross profit. And my measure, the selected value is actually summing up one column or the other or the other. But it's not taking into account whether a row is actuals or plan, because this is indicated in the scenario column. And so far our measures are completely ignoring the scenarios. So of course we need another measure. I go back to the report view. And then let's look at the AC filtered measure. And basically what this one does, it is calculate or is filtering the selected value measure, which is already depending on the KPI slicer. And it's only filtering or is only making the calculation if the scenario equals AC. And we do the same for plan numbers. So we also use the selected value measure as a base measure and then filter out only the rows which have PL in the column scenario. But this works for now actuals and plan for the KPI. It still doesn't consider monthly or year to date view. So there's another measure we need. Let's take a look at the AC measure. The AC measure again contains a switch and it contains a switch for selected calc. Where is this switch coming from? So selected calc is coming from the period calculation. So it's another custom table. Let's take a look. 
period calculation with the same logic than the KPI table. So we have the periodic calculation, month or year to date. It's the one shown in the slicer. And then we have the calc ID, either one or two. And this is exactly what is used in this slicer up here. So let's change this um, card visual quickly from selected KPI to selected calc. And then we see if year to date is selected, it shows two. But when I change to month, it's changing to showing one. And that's exactly what is used in the actuals measure. So if this switch is one, then I simply show the AC filtered. But if it is two, I turn the AC filtered into a year to date value using calculate and dates year to date. And the same is done for the plan. So if the selected calc is one, I just take the plan number. If it is two, I turn it into a year to date number. And then also there's one more measure which we need. And this is the previous year measure. And the previous year measure quite simply just takes the actuals measure, which already contains the definition from both of our slicers. So the KPI and the year to date and just uses the date add function to go back one year and then show the previous year figures. And because now we have all our measures, we can, our final measures, let's say, these are then added into the visuals. So all the measures like selected value, PL filtered, AC filter, they just made, they're just there to actually then create the final measures, AC, PL, and previous year, which are the ones added into the visuals. So what we can do here is also because the other ones will never be added directly into the report. You could also say, hide these measures from the report view, just to make it easier for the developers to choose the correct measures. So I hide and also selected value, hide that one. And then I can also say I don't want to see all the hidden ones. So right click and deactivate view hidden. And now I basically have only three measures left. And these are the ones which are used in all of the visuals on this page. Now that you've seen what this looks like in the final report, let's start from scratch again. So I have a blank report in front of me. And the first thing I want to do is add the custom table for the KPI selection. So I click on enter data. And then I want to give a name to this table and let's call it KPIs. And it will contain two columns. The first column will be KPI. The second one is the KPI ID. And then I want to add the KPI names. So we had revenues. Revenues is KPI number one. And then we had costs, which was KPI number two. And then we had gross profit, KPI number three. Once I'm done, I can click on load and this new table will be added to the data model. Once it is added, I create the slicer for the end user to select which KPI should be shown. So let's add the slicer to the report and go to the KPI table. And of course, I want to not show the KPI ID, but the name. So I add the KPI to it. And then I also change it from list to drop down. And of course, there's one more thing I need to do because it doesn't make sense that the user selects multiple KPIs at the same time. So let's change the slicer to single select. 
to make sure only one KPI can be selected at the same time. Move it somewhere over here. Great. Now I need to create the first measure indicating which KPI has been selected. So in the KPIs table, right click, new measure, and I want to call this measure selected KPI. So let's name it selected KPI, and it equals the min function from the KPI table, the ID column. Let's quickly see if that works. So I add a card visual, and then I add my new measure. It's currently showing two. Let's change it to gross profit. It should change to three revenues, two. Also in here, I might want to have a custom sort order. So what you can do is you can select the KPI and add a custom sort order to sort by KPI ID. So now we make sure that actually the first one the first, met, the first KPI in the drop-down is really KPI ID 1. Once this is done, I'll show you. First one, revenues is 1, costs is 2, gross profit is 3. Great. Now we can add a measure calculating the correct KPI. So I can add it into Let's add it into the sales table. So it should be the measure called um, selected KPI, or selected, selected value maybe, selected value. And here we need the first switch function. So I want to add a switch function and my switch is the just created measure. So it is the selected KPI measure. And if it is 1, then I want to sum up the revenue column. The revenue column, right? If it is 2, I want to sum up the costs. And if I selected 3, meaning gross, mark, gross profit, I want to sum up the gross profit. And that's my first basic measure. So confirm. And then also we can quickly see if this works. So again, I would add a card visual and I would add the new selected KPI, not the selected KPI, but the selected value measure. And then the, this number should change depending on which KPI has been selected. Of course, right now, this does not take any, take into account the scenario. So it doesn't matter. Um, it's just summing up the whole column. But of course, we need to create a measure for actuals and plan. So this is what I want to do next. So in sales, create a new measure, which is called selected AC and it equals to calculate because we need to change the filter. It is based on the selected value measure and we need to add a filter and the filter of course should be on the sales table and it should be only show rows where the scenario is AC. So the filter expression is scenario equals AC. So this is another measure for actuals. Let's create the same measure for plan. To make it easier, what we can do is we can select the AC measure, control A to select all, control C to copy, escape to close the formula bar, and then just create a new measure, right click new measure, and paste in the formula which we just copied. So I control V to paste it in and then I of course need to rename it. This time it should be PL for plan. And also in here I have PL for plan.
let's see if my measures work right let's take it into the card so selected actuals when I change KPI the number still change that looks good and for plan it should be it should be the same very good let's add the second custom table which indicates whether I want to show periodic values or year-to-date values so again we need another table which I can add by clicking on enter data we can call it selected period and it, uh, we call it selected or period and then period ID the first one is monthly this should be ID 1 and the second one is year to date ID number 2 load the table to the data model and then the process is very similar to what we just did for the KPI so we first need to add a measure which always shows either 1 for monthly or 2 for year to date so let's go to the new to the new table right click and add a new measure and we call it selected period and of course again this is also the min function again which is the ID column from the new table selected period very good and then we can add the second slicer so again add a slicer and then we want to add the period from the period calculation so we have two options monthly or year to date but as you saw in the previous report we want actually to have buttons so in order to change these two buttons go to format and then in general change from vertical to horizontal orientation and now we have two buttons we can also get rid of the header the slicer header and of course because it doesn't make sense to select monthly and year to date at the same time you need to make sure that you have single select activated then we resize it and arrange it up here very good and now let's also see if it does what it's supposed to do so in the card visual which we just need for testing purposes we add the new measure selected period so I've selected monthly it shows one select year to date it shows two so now what we can do is we can create our final actuals plan and previous year measures so back in the sales table I create a new measure and because this is the measure I will really use in the visuals I simply call it AC for actuals actuals equals and then we use the switch again so the switch and this time we use the switch for selected period so selected period if selected period is 1 then it should just take the selected AC measure because 1 means monthly but if the user has selected year to date which turns this measure into 2 we want to have calculate selected AC and add the year to date calculation we can use the dates year to date the dates year to date function to turn the selected AC into year to date so dates year to date we need to add the date column from the calendar table close close all the brackets and then we have the final actuals measure because again the plan measure is very similar I would go in here copy and paste it in order to make sure that the plan measure works the same way so again new measure and delete what's in here paste it in 
and then replace PL with AC in here as well, PL with AC and one more time PL with AC. So we have two final measures, actuals and plan. We need only one more and that is the previous year actuals measure. And for that one we can use, we can reuse the actuals measure and nest it into a calculate and use the date add function to go back one year. So um, I created a hierarchy, I didn't mean to do this, so I just delete this hierarchy again. Yes, and right click and select new measure. Right click, new measure, and I want to call it PY, which stands for previous year. And PY equals calculate our actuals measure. And then I use the date add function to go back one year. So I need to add the calendar, the date column from the calendar table. Our interval will be minus one and we want to go back minus one year. So basically now I have all the measures I need to create the report you saw in the beginning. But let's add some visuals to see if it behaves the way we want it to behave. So I delete our test visual in here and then let's add a Zebra BI charts visual and then let's add the from the calendar table the month to the category and also we want to show actuals compared to let's add plan into the plan field so now we have actuals compared to plan and because I have selected October up here it's only showing October but of course for this comparison over time I probably don't want this monthly filter to, to really filter this table so let's get rid of this let's deactivate this interaction so I select the visual and in format edit interaction I can turn off the cross filtering and now I really have the comparison from January to December and when I change to a monthly view I should get different numbers and when I change the KPI as well I should get a different view. Let's try something else. Let's also add the Zebra BI tables visual and we move it down here this one we just resize a bit, that one as well and let's also add actuals. This time we can also add previous year to compare actuals and previous year and we want to compare this by let's say business units. So I could go to business units and take business units into category and now I have a nice visual comparing actuals and previous year for business units and of course also this visual is fully dynamic so when the user changes to revenues the numbers now show revenues and of course also when I change to year to date everything changes to, to year to date and as you saw in the beginning in the initial report you could add many more visuals like that and have them fully dynamic which really makes it much easier for your end user to see what they are currently looking at. And um, it just makes analyzing data much easier. They, it's up to them to decide what they are interested in. Um, yeah, I think that would be it. Now you know how to add dynamic slicers and slicer buttons to your report to, to really add functionality. Of course, this file can be downloaded from the Zero BI knowledge base and if you want to learn more Power BI tips and tricks make sure to look at all the other articles in the knowledge base.